GMS fam, if you just now turning in, hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the bell. Let's go, roll up. GMS fam, what's happening? Hey, I see y'all in there. J.R. Miller, Brim Dog. Yo, man, what is this? Lady Aries. Black Man America. Tyler Beneficiary. Binky Bianca. Wonder Man. Al J.W. Quincy. Qu Quincy X in this motherfucker. What's happening, bro? Y'all already know what's going on, man. GMS family. I asked y'all to pull up and y'all pulled up. So I want to first and foremost thank y'all, and like I always do, every motherfucking show, I want to start this with peace and positivity. I hope everybody's doing well. It's a wonderful Tuesday. Uh, GMS family, hope everybody out there is getting to the money, staying positive, woke up on the right side of the bed, and is out there hustling, ain't shit stopping them. You know how we do. Uh, today is a special day, man. You know, I've been doing these interviews, and I have been doing this show for a minute now, we have been uh, building up together, GMS family. I really appreciate y'all. And uh, this person today that uh, I'm getting ready to interview is a very, very dope individual uh, who I have had the pleasure of following along well as the gang for a long time and just seeing their progress, seeing their growth, seeing the way that they have elevated over the years as not just a collective, but as individuals. And I really want y'all to send a very warm welcome and get your lungs ready for my man, DJ Bonix. Everybody, say what's up to DJ Bonix. Hey, 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 hey. hey what's what going up? on? So, How's everybody. Everyone? Big shout out to everyone who tuned in. Thank you so much, Bonix, man. You already getting ready. I see. I see you getting ready. Let me roll up too while we while we start this interview, man. What's going on? I see you with the with the very illustrious pin. Uh, shout out to shout out to Yardin as well, uh, based out of Las Vegas, man. That's Yardine, definitely. Yard, Yardine, Yardine. I said I said Yardin. Yardine, Yardine. It's all good. Now I've always wanted to know how to say that. I've been. I I, I first I said Jardin, and I was like, Nah, it's not Jardin. It's got to be something dope to that. It's Yardin or some shit. No, nah, Yardine. Yeah, yeah, I think like it means garden in French and uh, maybe in Spanish. Ah, okay, okay. Shout out to them, man. I see you be working close with them, man. That's right. Um, first and foremost, man. Of course, we gonna we gonna get to you know a bunch of other stuff later. But, uh, you know, if, if anybody here doesn't know, uh, DJ Bonix by his name, DJ, uh, not 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 press buttons, Bonix. It's DJ fuck up and turn your whole head around. You know what I'm saying? I've had the pleasure to see my man go. You know what I'm saying? But what I want to start with before we get to other shit. Birthday, you know what I'm a, saying? The uh, but you was born in 81, I think. So I was born a year and then learned from Pittsburgh and was able to go from you know dorm room dj to college party dj to club dj or around the world and live in all these other different cities to do radio back to Phil actually next weekend a couple things and uh there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that I i've been working on and i'd love the twin cities man even if you come for the city and right i uh learned how super special that place is and to oh, be yeah. a part of is is amazing. Minneapolis definitely got love for you, bro. Like 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 real love for you and it's because you 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 showed that first, you know what I'm saying? It was all reciprocate fake shit. You came here with open arms, you was ready to embrace everybody, so you got that right back. Now, yeah. I didn't know uh so you you were born in Philly. Yep. Mm -hmm. So born in Philly and then migrated over to Pittsburgh. Mhm. Mm well, uh, irony is like 
I think the irony is that I didn't really understand once I figured out that it was a culture. Yeah. Once you figured out that you could like to like, you know, whatever was on the radio and and so younger I used to have this little boom box and uh I think I tweeted the link and what I would do is I would flip different stations and try to like make it like a mixtape off man, I know what song's coming up next or and so and my dad was in a band is is when you start hanging out with those kids. That was a different yeah. you know, you and when you're younger you're hanging out with kids in your neighborhood, right? And they're all different shapes, sizes. But when you're in college, uh, you can choose to hang out. Or I guess high school too, but still, it was still like kids in your neighborhood. Right, uh, right. When you go to college, you, you got kids from all over the world, and these kids, whether they're, you kind of gravitate towards these kids, and that's kind of like what happened in Pittsburgh. And so, when I got my first pair of turntables, and I started buying records, and I started supporting local shows, and how can I like we didn't have YouTube, so like how could I watch DJing? Well, guess what? You have to go actually support DJing. Exactly. Uh, so that was very uh, that was a great experience, and and I you know I respected it as a culture, so I treated it like that as a culture. As you should, and, sir. And, and yeah, but people don't look at it like that way, and right. um, I was able to learn and expand and meet all these people and meet so many interesting people. And learn like, yo, some of the artists that came out of Pittsburgh and then, you know, those relationships, those were some of the guys who, how I met Wiz and all that. Uh, right. So, man, that's the one thing about artists. If there's a lot of artists out there, like I get that you can do it all from home and there's yeah. no real blueprint to it. But getting to know the characters in the game and in the scene and, yo, DJs out here being like, wink, wink. Yo, how can I play? I'm like, well, have you gone support nights? Like, that's how you do it. Yeah, wanna, right. You know, just because you DJ don't mean you should be getting a gig. Like, you should be supporting the gigs and doing all that. And I think that's a part that they miss. You know, it's just like, yo, I made a song. Fuck with me. Like, nah, man. You support me? <laughs> you know, you support me? You no, know? That's facts. And that's community and that's culture. Yeah, I think that uh, I, I'm glad you pinpointed that because one thing in particular when it comes to the scene out here in Minneapolis uh, in particular, is that a lot of people I think feel like they and I and it's not just Minneapolis. Of course, it's everywhere. But like me living here and being part of the scene, I realize that a lot of people do expect the support, but just don't reciprocate it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I mean, they don't give it back. Uh, it's like, and whatever. I'm not trying. There's no like shit talking here. No, nah, not at all. There's like an entitlement. You know what I mean? That people. Yeah have be, you know why though is because they see other people doing it so they see p people doing it like right in the palm of their hand right and they just can't di different di differentiate well i posted it why is my shit not going viral like yo there's so much more work that is involved Man. in that a lot of people think yo i've seen people who have videos they post it once like that's not enough man you no. do you, we know what the coca-cola logo look like but they put it everywhere right and that's like those missed branding opportunities where we've, I think people have become so entitled and lazy and like, man, people used to have to like go out and show their face and that worked and that's still going to work. But just cause you're out here tweeting and I see people buying likes and shit. I see y'all. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. And, and I'm I, another thing, you know, that's a good example of somebody like Lizzo when her breakout single came, people thought that she just recorded that single that year. She was pushing it for like four before then. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it takes a while, bro. Nah, totally. I mean, the fact that Lizzo, um, like, uh, what's that song? Truth Hurts? I, like, that was yeah. out for a minute. So, oh, yeah. Uh, it's just in a testament to Song Ain't Dead, just because it didn't pop off the way that you want it. You know, I see a lot of people doing it, whether it's like, he said, be annoying with the brand. I see you. Yeah, Hell like, people, yeah. just because their shirt didn't pop off the first time around. Well, what can you do differently? You know, people really think that they sit on these gold ideas and then they think it's supposed to pop off, but. I mean, you got to create relationships and, and yeah. not everyone gets lucky. You know what nah. I mean? It's not built for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Some people notice that and some people, you know, choose to let that bring them down or they choose to find other avenues that they're good at. You know what I'm saying? I think that's another important thing that people got to remember, man. Just because one lane ain't working for you don't mean that you don't have other lanes to go down. And it's about like, like this dude said, you got to be consistent and put the song out there and put it out yeah. there like there's some great songs that people move on to the next song. And I'm like, yo, there's people who haven't heard this. What are you doing? Right. Um, put it out. Like, 
because it, it's just about time or place. Just because I tweet something right now at, you know, 520, someone may not be, they may be far from their phone and not see it. But that, that's why it drives me crazy when I see people who drop all this content and yeah, including myself, like I need to repeat content. I have to exercise that shit because you're going to benefit from it. Yep. Like uh, I just posted some shit recently trying to raise money and I normally don't push shit on Facebook. But I was like, you know what? Let me post this shit on Facebook. And someone donated like a thousand bucks just off Facebook. And I'm like, I, and then I realized like, oh shit, I need to be exploring that more. So you never know. Not, not be lazy, you know? You never know, man. That's the thing. You, you, And what if you didn't, you know what I'm saying? That shit wouldn't have went to a charitable cause. You know what I'm saying? So it's a good thing you did do that. Now, moving to, you know, like I said, you know, you're, you're, you're growing love for hip hop and you starting to DJ. Um... What was that? What was that trend or not even really, really a transition? What was that like to start to like really get into DJing and moving around the way that you moved around, like getting your first gig or getting multiple gigs? I mean, it just is so you can walk this shit out like, yeah. man, and it's, it's so simple as like you put some fucking time into it. You get good at it. People take notice. And then you get rewarded. And that's simple. People want to skip those steps, man. They, won't, they don't want to put time in it. They want to like, yo, I remember, yo, here's a good story. And uh, here's a Pittsburgh or a Minnesota cat. Uh, I know this cat who was a promoter and he was managing an artist. And then the next year he came around and he was like, I'm an artist now. I was like, okay. He was like, you know, come meet me. Uh, I was like, can I come to the studio and fuck with you? I was like, all right. I don't normally invite Aaron to the studio, but sometimes I have big right. brother motherfuckers, like just to teach them like some mannerisms and as just being a young man and trying to like, and, and, and approach people. Well, this dude right. was like, he came through and he walks in like, so the, uh, someone lets him in the studio and he walks in on Insta with Instagram live on. And I'm like, what are you doing? Turn that off. And he was like, oh, man, you know, I'm just trying to show people that I'm out here. I'm like, why are you trying to show people anything? Like, you come right. here to build with me. And then he was like, yo, I wrote a song. I want you to check it. And I said, how many songs have you written? And he was like, this is my only one. And I said, <laughs> I, I need you to come back when you have 100 of them. Because it, that would be disrespectful to anyone who's been working their ass off making more than one song. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, I told him I don't want to. I told him I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to hear it. I was like, I don't even want to hear it. Like, you gotta be you know, real though. Yeah, and I was like, I don't want to hear it because that's not fair, yo. I'm not putting. I'm not. That's not fair. Like, nah. I can't do that for the sake that there's people out here that um that are uh, that are working their ass off and really putting the effort. And this dude's like, yo, give me some attention because I made one song. Nah, fuck that shit. Yeah, no, nah, I, 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 and that's another thing, man. Not. And from my perspective, it's just it's just that simple, man. If you want people to take you seriously, you got to take yourself seriously. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it, just because yeah. he knew you didn't mean shit. Right. And, like, you know, people want to be the main character in their shit. And I get that part. But, like, yeah. there's obviously work part of this that people are forgetting. You got to put in work. Like, And once you're pretty good at something, you're cool. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But people out here are really trying to make magic out of mediocre and you know some people do win but they they get moments uh, I'm, you know i'm trying to like have this shit be lifetime of adventures you know what i mean oh man you you definitely you definitely on that path like <laughs> that's definitely been your path just been like i said like you know me me and you haven't really got to know each other like that but just just seeing you over the years and just you know following you and watching you i can tell that you know you really are a, a, a genuine person you know what i'm saying like you're not the type of person where somebody will walk in on Instagram live and you don't say shit about it and just be like, man, I, I feel uncomfortable or whatever the fuck. No, you you speak the fuck up. And right, it's not right. even in a malicious way or like a a, a, a disrespectful way. It's just like you got to keep it real like that. I mean, there's certainly been times where I had opportunities to shoot my shot or say something that I missed. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, but yeah, you know, I try to keep it, keep it as real as possible. But, you know, sometimes it's hard we all doubt ourselves in moments and, and, uh, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're so right. In, in the, in the beginning stages, first I want to, I want to ask the, the, one of the, one of the, one of the money questions is how you, and like you said, you have some friends out there in, uh, in Pittsburgh and that's kind of how you got entangled with, with Wiz back in the day. So what, what, what year was it? And what, what started you to become the official DJ for Wiz Khalifa? Shout so, out to Taylor game. I met Wiz. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I met Wiz um, through my boy, Eric Dan, who runs ID Labs. 
And oh, Eden. I, I, yeah, Eden. Yeah, Eden. Okay. So Eric, okay. So you, I, you know, I, I know, I know all this shit. I know all the motherfuckers. Yeah. So Eric <laughs> and I, like, he was in a group called Strict Flow, and he was the DJ and producer in the group. And I had worked with him. I came to him on working on some projects, and we ended up being pretty good friends. I actually sold Eden's first beat. Which oh, is kind of, uh, And you know, I used to hang out with him in his basement uh, studio in his house. And, um, you know, then he moved to, I, he made, he created ID labs in mm -hmm. Lawrenceville, Pennsylvania. And I remember so vividly him saying like, yo, there's these kids that they, uh, you know, I'm in my twenties. I'm about, I think almost eight years older than Wiz. So he's like, there's these kids in high school that come after school and record. And this one dude, his name's Cameron. He's like, just better than all of them. Mm -hmm. And, um, since that moment, since he discovered him really, they built a team around Wiz at the time. And so I was helping Wiz. I had booked some shows for him and got him to open up for TI and got him his first show at Pitt. And uh, I was doing my thing eventually on the radio. And I, you know, I had success on the radio and I was, I was DJing like every night in Pittsburgh. Yeah. I was, the, I was that dude in that, in that regard, I guess. Right. DJing, right. You know, I was on the radio. So I wasn't really DJing for Wiz till, one time in 2010, he was like, oh, we have a New Year's Day show with Wale, the 930 Club. We need a DJ. It's a double show. And I was like, OK, I'll do it. So I remember doing it. And Wiz, I remember Wiz being like, yo, that was like the best DJ I ever had. I was like, thanks, man. Shout out to all his DJs, though. That, right, that was a, right. I'm just telling that story. I'm not saying that I was or I wasn't. No, um, you was. <laughs> and, uh, and so I got to do that. And I was amazing. And I, I it was weird. Like. I was at a radio station and I, I wasn't feeling the music. I wasn't getting along with my boss. And I could definitely feel like that I needed to change my, I had something needed to change. And I could feel it. I had a friend that died and I was just like not happy. And, yeah. and uh, Will, Wiz's assistant at the time was like, yo, Wiz signed to Atlantic. We made this song called Black and Yellow. We're going to tour or do our first tour bus tour. Do you want to come on tour with us? And, you know, I had to quit my job. Um, Full benefits afternoon number one afternoon guy on the Kiss Pop station in Pittsburgh and yeah you was already was, lit yeah I was lit I mean I felt like that was that's <laughs> ankle for some people like right and I risked it all yo I was like nah fuck my I remember my sister being like risk big reward big is what she told me mm. and uh, I remember being in the studio I was crying and I was crying because I was like I know what the right answer is but it's hard to accept it. Yeah, I was giving up seven years of radio in the position, number one, to take a chance with this dude who made a song called Black and Yellow. And at the time when I heard it, I was like, this is dope, but this is like the first single that national. Right. And I just I, I didn't I, you know, I don't want to say I didn't believe in it. I was just kind of like, really, this is the this I is what I'm about to take a chance on. <laughs> yeah. And um, and guess what? The Steelers went to the Super Bowl that year. Exactly. And uh, fortunately, they didn't win, but that was the number one song in the country, and everyone made their version of it. And I got to tour over 30 cities, a sold out tour in all Man. the legendary venues for that size um, of uh, artists he was. And that's where I met all types of people on the road, uh, you know, DJs and artists. And yeah. man, then and now, we've had Kendrick Lamar opening for us and Mac and, yep. and Will Boy Q and ASAP Rocky. And we, yo, so just a lot of legends. Uh, yeah, you, you got to see a lot of people actually uh, grow out here in this industry, too. A lot of people who are superstars today who were out here you know, building with y'all, opening for y'all, just kind of seeing they grind as well. Like, you got to see a lot of that. Right. And that's, like, that's one thing I did want to talk to you about as well. You know, rest in peace, Mac, man. You actually uh, worked on kids. Oh, yeah. You know, I did the cuts for Mac. He asked me yep. to do scratch for uh, Mad Flavor, Heavy Flow. And I remember going yep. to the studio and I kept being like, nah, it ain't good enough. Now nah, he's like, oh, that's cool. Um, and I was the first one to play Mac Miller on the radio in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, he was a little homie. We got to tour with him for a few years. He let me do a couple of remixes and uh, man, that was really hard. And, yeah. and what's great about Minnesota, man, is that Minnesota twin cities is like super tasteful. Yeah. And the amount of Mac fans and the love that he has out there. And I, I did one of his last, uh, radio interviews. He wasn't really doing a lot of interviews for radio and I, me and, I got to when I was on the radio in Portland, got to interview him and Peter had the other one in in in, in Minneapolis. So yeah. um 
Mac was an amazing human, man, and a great artist. Most definitely. And we had some good memories. I have some pretty funny Mac Miller videos on my YouTube, and you guys should search that. Follow me on YouTube, y'all, uh, DJ Bonix. But if you search DJ Bonix and Mac Miller, I have some videos where he's, like, sleeping on the tour bus, and we, like, this one time we took an iPad and had, like, machine gun sounds, and he was <laughs> he had slept, fell asleep with his earphones on, and so we, like, plugged in the aux cord and played gunshots. Yeah, and- shit. <laughs> That's <laughs> fucked up. Pittsburgh, what's up, my master? Hey man, shout out, shout out to Mac, man. Rest in peace to Mac, man. Like you said, a really great artist, man. Really, really great artist. Great human being as well. Of course, I didn't know him personally, but I'm pretty sure you can echo those sentiments that he's a really, really good person because that's all I hear from people that really know him. Um, and also as well as um, work, just working with a bunch of different art, a bunch of different artists that are part of uh the conglomerate, like getting to see everybody a part of uh, Taylor Gang kind of, you know, branch and do their own things, you know what I'm saying, from, you know, Chevy Woods, you know, Tukey, you know, just a, a, a different a different amount of people and then just everybody playing their role and doing exactly what it is. And I think one of the things that um, I gravitated towards with, with you guys is the fact that you, you guys have real, like, solidarity. And, you know, when people come up, they switch out. They switch a lot of people up. And, I, and one thing that I've, uh, I've noticed is that, you know, Wiz has kept the same people around, and I, and I feel like it's for a reason. You know, I feel like you guys are really uh, real, real tight-knit. Um, one thing I do want to ask uh, is how, you know, first of all, you, you've toured across the, the world. You know what I'm saying? You got to see a, a lot of things. What was some of the best uh, countries that you went to and some of the experiences that you had? Uh you know, we toured Europe with ASAP Rocky, and that was incredible. Mm. They had an amazing show. And just imagine Wiz and ASAP Rocky. Um, you know, weed is pretty, for a while, it probably still is, like, pretty illegal in a lot of places. So what's great about Wiz is that, like, we're bringing the potheads out. Yeah. And I think Wiz is definitely on, he was a part of that elbow of where hip-hop was changing from, um, you know, he brought the snapbacks and was smoking papers. and. Oh, yeah. You know, he, he kind of was like the elbow there and seeing those like I'm and I'm from a generation before him, I feel like, you mm-hmm. know, and um, I think that uh, he really was a voice of a generation like people weren't putting weed in the video like he was at first. Oh, and, no. all that. and then he, then he switched it up a lot fast, uh, you know, went from snapbacks to looking smooth and wearing tighter shit and then. People were like, uh, and then he dyed his hair purple and people were like, uh, and right. he had the little white stripe. And now, you know what I'm saying? And I now, mean, you know, we just had everybody with the, with the, with the motherfucking patch in their hair. That's, that's a given. Like he right. started a lot of shit in the culture. Kwame actually was the first like rapper that I know who had it, but I mean, no one had wore it like, you know, 20 years after that. Yeah. Nobody, uh, nobody ever remembered that. I, I, I feel but, like, I feel like we, I feel like a lot of that. You know, like he had he had fat motherfuckers wearing five hundred one jeans. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you, right. <laughs> it's it's real and, shit. And it, like he had people rethinking shit, man. Like people really took that blunt paper shit, man, seriously. We're like, oh man, I don't like, bro. Like, All right, it's not that serious, but you change your life. <laughs> it did. Health, health will be better if you change to papers. You'll see the difference. Uh, but man, and then you know we switched it up a lot in in ways of fashion that. Uh, sorry, I'm out here in the backyard. The bugs. Oh no, that's on. just nature. We good with that. Yeah, I like that. Um, nature's air horn, right? Right. Um, so, man, I'm really happy to be with him. The thing about that people don't realize. Let me just say this: if you're artists out there, is that what makes Wiz Wiz is artists. They're they exist if they have a hit. Wiz exists if there's weed. And yeah. Guess what? You know, there's we because, I, we, you know, I was touring in Europe one time and I was like, why are we out here? Why isn't this artist or this artist? And um, I realized that it's a it's that culture. It's bigger than that. That's why yeah. Bob Marley still selling merch. Right. Mm-hmm. Man, I put out a song in years <laughs> uh, still selling merch. Right. And. And Cypress Hill and Snoop Dogg is because there's a there, that's a culture. Yeah. And, so, you know, I think artists, you should start thinking about culture artists. And, and that's what I feel like. That's why it goes back to what I was saying about hip hop and treating it like a culture, because when you treat it like a culture, 
it, it's a it's a community it, it becomes a community of things that's why hip-hop is a community but um yeah man shout out to Wiz. Well, we even, of, he took me out of the world like we've been around like brazil man we have crazy wild sort of like i remember one time we were in mexico and we went to a strip club at like three in the afternoon that was interesting <laughs> random imagine, as like, hell we're we're in amsterdam and we're imagine if you're you go to amsterdam and you walk in because you're like an american and you want to smoke weed and you walk in and Wiz Khalifa's in there. Like there were so many times that we just sat on, on like a huge like Last Supper type table and we were doing dab, <laughs> smoking bongs and weed in Amsterdam. You know, drinking yeah. a cup of tea and so man, Germany's and J- Japan and Africa. Motherfuckers wearing Pittsburgh hats in South Africa. You're like, holy shit! Like it's, it's crazy. the influence, man. Like it's it's a huge influence. Like weed culture is like something that is that's fucking amazing, and e- even to the point where it's changing economies around America. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, it's 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 important. Two two parts to that is, um, look, it doesn't have to be weed. I see uh, Player for Life. I'm smoking weed again, and I don't know if you're referring to like, yo, if you just love dogs and you're like a fucking dog expert, and you like guess what? There are people that like dogs and will listen to your content about dogs. Yeah. Like that's what it is. And guess what that is? It's a culture. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. And, um, the second part that I wanted to say to that, I totally forget. <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. We smoke it. Uh, what I, I also wanted to get into, you know, just you being the, the person that, that, that you are starting off in radio, you know, opposed like to what are, what are some of the, the things that you miss, really not even just miss but like you preferring like would you prefer radio or would you prefer djing across the world okay so djing across the world's fun don't get me wrong and this yeah. is I'm, and this is actually what i'm going through at the moment so this is actually a cool time to be able to express this I right mean, this is happening in real time and it's different for everyone all right so whatever yeah. i say doesn't mean that it applies to you and i'm trying to take your freedom away or some shit um I need to explore different experiences. Mm. I can't hold on to being a DJ and being like, yo, I'm 40 years old. Come check me out. I'm playing at Uptown. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. I've gotten a certain experience from DJing. So no matter if it's like three people or 3,000 people, when someone's showing you love and you're DJing, that's the same feeling. Yeah. Now, if I don't try to challenge myself to get new experiences, I don't, I'm going to get comfortable. And then it'll just be like, Hey fam, check me out. I'm DJing on Friday again in this city. And that's cool. Shout out to the legends who've held down nights for years and whatever, blah, 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 blah. But I'm just thinking about it in a way of like people, DJs get a lot of attention. They get free drinks. They get music. They might get some girls out of it or guys, Mm -hmm. girl or whatever preference you have. Um, and people are addicted to that and being the main character and like, what do I do when I'm not the man anymore? And so then they don't make new experiences because they just stay in that comfort. And I'm yeah. trying to explore that right now. Right. I'm trying to look forward to what's next in my career. Um, and it might not be full-time radio. It might be something else. And I have to welcome that. I'm kind of sad about that. You know what I mean? Like I, I could, I would love to impact the city. I'd love to still be on the radio in Minneapolis and use whatever connections I have and influence uh, to help that city as much as I can. And I, and I'll totally am going to do that with the twin cities yeah. as far as I, as far as I can take it. Um, but I'm, I also have to explore, I can't hold on to this shit, man. I got to help empower other people and give that young uh, other people and experience at some point. Right. Um, and so I think it's important to remember that, that that's how you expand your mind. So now I'm like, I'm doing a lot of things that I don't necessarily want to say out loud at the moment, right. but where I'm like quarterbacking things now and I'm just exploring. I'm, I could have been doing this shit earlier as far as like just diversifying shit, but it's scary, you know, like getting out of getting, um, getting out of your comfort out of, zone yeah getting out of your comfort zone um is super important you know what i mean 
Well, I mean, I see you on, you know, on TV, you know, the CW. I see you doing that, and it looks like you fit well doing the commercials as well. Just, you know, what I'm saying that you're you're well versed in other things, you know, right. opposed to just DJing. You know what I'm saying? Like you you have a, a great on air personality. Um, I think there's a, a you know, for for me personally, just to even piggyback off of what you're saying, me being uh, the local artist. And trying to have, you know, motherfuckers hear me like, yo, hear this, listen to this. And trying to, you know, to be the person to try to, you know, get something to happen with that. And, you know, behind the scenes doing all this other shit that I was, you know, talented at, like producing or, you know, writing shit or. Video shit, man. You're yeah, like, like, you're a girl, man. You're, you're I, doing I, a lot. Do I appreciate lot. that. I appreciate that. And, and it was one of those things where I had to get over myself in a way, like trying to be the rapper i'm trying to be the dude that people see on the microphone on stage or on the video and shit like that knowing that i have these other talents and i'm multi-talented in, in other ways and trying to keep myself in some type of box that's why i decided to really just open up you know all avenues this is why i'm doing this right here you know what i'm saying I, I feel like i really found my lane through this so i feel like you know of course of course you would do the same thing you know if, if especially the way you excel in things yeah, um, yo, just keep being a creator, man. That's what we're here for, man, is uh, to create memories, create opportunities. And um, if you're really serious about it out there, artists and shit, like you got to go all the way with it, man. You got oh, yeah. you to gotta, you focus on it. You got to will it. You have to. I think about that all the time that I got the experience. I, I'm, I'm cool. If I had to work at Best Buy tomorrow, I'm cool. Oh, yeah. Um, because. I understand that I live this shit out. I lived, I lived my dream out and I'm going to continue to do it. And now I'm going to push different, different avenues and working with, you know, I'm working with Hardeen a little bit more heavier and I'm going to try to find opportunities to empower young creatives. Um, and, you know, you know, with, with the resources that Hardeen has and the weed industry is in shrinking, you know what I mean? And, right. And, find different ways to exist. I'm always trying to do it a little different. If you notice, you know what I mean? Um, exactly. And that's why I want to keep, look, I could, I could be the man and play the hot record in the club and drink the bottles and stuff. But man, I'm trying to get more of experiences because that's what matters. Yeah. You've done, you, you've done a, you've done a lot over the years. You've accomplished a lot. Like you said, you've lived your dream, but there's still more to go. You know what I'm saying? It's not like you lived your dream and you're old as shit in your fucking 70s and 80s and you just like Jeez, you know great. what i'm retiring oh that's that's yeah, those are that's every you gotta you got a white hair for every place that you travel <laughs> definitely earned those grades yes she did yes she did man and uh one thing i do uh i i, I do want to ask this question as well just like certain uh certain things out here it's it, it's it's you know it's important that we stay um we, we stay on track with, with the things that we're doing. And I saw, you know, of course you did uh, multiple things at once, whether it was being on the radio or uh, uh, or, or leaving to go uh, go do a date with Wiz, you know, go go perform somewhere. When people are trying to multitask, what is, what is something that you can, what is some advice that you can give people about being in different avenues at once? I mean, I can only speak from my experience, but right. it's, it feels like to me, the more structure, like I had, the way that I described this was, I created this, like let's let's talk about Go Radio. Yeah, I had to be on the radio from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. or I'm sorry, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day, no mm -hmm. matter what time zone I was in. I was doing the show from damn Korea at some point, right? And staying up all night just to get it in before the time at 10 a.m. Central Time. But what I had told someone is like, imagine locking yourself up in a schedule of shit that you love to do. You get what I'm saying? And I'm yeah. not saying that, you know, people like to say, like, um, if you love what you do, you don't work, you don't work a day in your life. And I'm like, nah, there's work involved into it, but yeah. it's still enjoyable because there's a process. Uh, and I really think that it's a mix of, I, it depends what kind of type of discipline you have. Like if I had all the time in the world, man, I could be creating all sorts of shit, but it also means that I have no discipline. And so I remember when I lived in LA, 
I, I, I wasted my time there because I wasn't disciplined. I didn't get up to do the things that I had to do, mm-hmm. but that, you know, it's different strokes for different folks. And for me, if I lock myself up in a, Oh shit, I agreed to do this and here's the deadline. I feel that pressure. And then I like that pressure and I like that deadline. I like the pressure of like, gotta get it done. Gotta get it done. Right. But, if, but if we're outside, um, if we're not like p- applying pressure to yourself, then it's hard. You, you're just going to waste away. And now it's easy to just fucking scroll your life away, man. So yeah, it is. what I would say is be very, very, don't just take intake everything, man. Like yeah. don't just intake, like limit what you intake. I don't watch a lot of movies or I, you know why? Because I would like it too much. I know that sounds <laughs> right, crazy. Right. But I could be doing two hours worth of something else. And, I, you know, and that's what it is. Like, I would like that too much if I did that. Like, I like I like chicken wings, right? But I stop <laughs> eating meat right now. Or I stop yeah. eating chicken, pork, and beef right now. And right. you just got to, like, create some healthy boundaries for yourself from time to time. It's really, really helpful. And so, you know, to your question about multitasking shit is, like, you got to be smart about your time. And then, you know, the cats out here who are like putting out albums and also working in a fucking day job, like they're yeah. hustling. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate those cats. So, you know, it's I think- problem, also like rest and self care and taking yeah. care of you. Like, you know, we grew up in this culture. It's weird. It's extremes. Like I grew up in the hustle, 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 hustle. Yeah. And, and, and then the right now culture is like, Oh, it's okay. If thing, you know, slow down and, Blah blah blah. It's just a mix of both, man. It's a mm-hmm. yin and yang. Like we can't be out here, can't be a victim your whole life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, and to speak to what you're saying about like how how easy it is to just scroll your fucking life away on the phone. You know, people. It, it's become more uh, in people's head and their idea that they can become successful if they just sit from their phone and because they they feel like just doing things from their phone will get them certain places. You may go viral, but it ain't gonna be no longevity. I mean, people have. That's the thing is that that's why people want to win the lottery, right? Because they exactly. know that someone has. But it's really hard. So you really have to to work and put yourself out there. But also at the same time, don't stress yourself out about it and just go hard, man. And, and yeah. be great at what you do. Be undeniable, you know? Yeah, I What's think we... Side? Oh, scrolling, right, right? <laughs> Shout out to Kid at Heart. Uh... Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, like, man, I definitely just be careful with that camera, mom. He said, well, he said, come to the dark side. He want, he wants you to be sitting at home, lazy as hell. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what <laughs> the difference is. I, I was definitely in a dark spot recently for a few months, and um, it was very hard. Yeah, and I didn't do shit. And recent, and so in the last five weeks, I've been kind of coming awake and coming alive. And it's certainly that power, that law of attraction, man. Is like when you are, it, it. Some things don't seem related, right? Yeah. But guess what? If you eat good, you feel good. If you feel good, you do good. You know what I'm saying? And that's what you have to do for yourself in all, in all of those lanes. Is right. And, 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 you know, not I'm not trying to change the subject or anything, but like, you know, the way that I don't care what you believe in right now, but the way that people are reacting about um, what's going on in this world is solely because of the messages that they're putting themselves in front of. Yeah. And you could say that about food and you could say that about, um, you know, exercise and, or whatever, yo. So it's, yeah. it's about those, like God levels, man. You know what I mean? Nah, most definitely, most do definitely. Do I look man. sweaty? Is that what Brent said? He's ponics outside. Oh, oh no, he my... think you because it's a, it's damn near a hundred in Minnesota right now. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, is the is the is the the cameras cool? It's not. Oh no, you good, you good. He just he it's hot as fuck out here. Ben Slim, he from Minnesota too. He he live out here. What up, y'all? What's up? But ben? shout out to everybody in the chat right now. So you know, before I wrap this up, man. I just want to say, for one, you know, uh, I like I said, I, I always appreciate you, man. A great level of respect. Uh, you guys, you know, just as a collective, just, you know, being able to uh, follow you guys and watch what you do, man. I, I've learned a lot from you guys over the years uh, just as a collective, you know, Taylor Gang as a whole. You know what I'm saying? You're just, you, you guys, 
really, really put a stamp on the culture. Um, and, and then you solely, you, uh, you know, coming out here and, and like I said, opening your arms and, and, and embracing the scene like you did and, and becoming somebody who I respect even a whole lot more, you know, just for what you like, you didn't have to come to Minnesota. I felt like for one, that was the most random shit in the world. I did not expect, you know, DJ Bonds to pop up in Minnesota and, and just, you know, build out here but you did and i really appreciate that man and uh you know once again like like i said continue success man on whatever it is that you want to do um and i already know that that's that that's going to happen to you because of the fact that you've been out here working as hard as you have and just uh keeping that mindset man and i really really appreciate you man thank you so much oh it's all good man thank you for being a creator out there uh, before I mention a couple other things, if anyone has any questions or whatever, feel free to ask. I'll answer. Oh, yeah, questions. yeah, most definitely. Chat, put your questions out there, man. Whatever questions you got for DJ Bonics, man, ask away. And, uh, man, it's been a great journey. And, look, man, I'm not sitting on a mill. I'm not um, – I've definitely been in the belly of the beast, and I have access to these things where I could be, like, just hanging out with Wiz all the time or doing some shit like that. Like, man – I love this journey and y'all, yeah. you all too have a story and I like to say something to the effect of like, nobody wants to read a book chapter one and he lived happily ever after. Right. Like yeah. this is a complete journey. Don't expect you can't love. Like we experience love in, in, in different periods, you know, we're going to feel low. We're going to suffer. Um, so, you know, especially in Minneapolis, man, shout out, I know a lot of people here from Minneapolis, yeah. like I don't keep holding each other down and, yeah. and, and act like a community. And that's, that's the one thing and not to get too deep into it. You know, it got really scary last year with, with, uh, different people and canceling and everyone calling each other out and this and that, like, that's the yeah. scary place to live in that you're not acting like a community in that way. I'm, and I'm not saying the full gamut, like, so please don't assume anything. No, nah, no, nah, trust me. I know what you mean. I'm just saying that like, man, we got to be out there for each other. There's going to be people in our community that are not, are going to be, have their heads low and we got to lift them up. And then when we're low, we're going to have to go, uh, you know, we're going to need people to lean on. So just, uh, just keep you guys, y'all have the power, man. And right now the powers that be are trying to separate us from our real greatness, that love that we have. And they're trying to make us forget the, the, what we truly, this gift that we truly have, man, which is, um, there's a lot of magic going on. You know what I'm saying? So, right. um, yo, just keep going. If anyone out here wants to reach out to me, feel free to follow. And if y'all have podcasts or whatever, if you're in Vegas, I'm probably moving out to Vegas, kind of a little soft announcement. Um, I'm probably moving out to Vegas and, um, I'll be out there. I'm going to try to get you out there, man. And, and that would be are, dope. Uh, yeah, it would be real cool, man. It would be real cool. What kind of questions we got in here? First, <laughs> my guy, Jay, I said, can you listen to my mixtape? <laughs> Dude, uh, stupid. So, so what happened to B96? I, yeah. I don't know. I yeah, don't he know. wasn't He wasn't around for that for that era, bro. He didn't He didn't see what happened to B96. <laughs> uh, J.R. Miller, can you listen to my mixtape? I mean, sure, man, but, you know, introduce yourself first. <laughs> um, that's the one thing that people are so funny that that's like one line that I always have when people come up to me and ask me for something like, yo dog, I'll be like, well, is that an introduction? I'll be like, you asking me something before you even <laughs> ask me how my day was. And I'm not saying like, Jay, I don't think that personal by any means. Oh, he doesn't but, at all. <laughs> I remember the other day I was in Kentucky and I was there for a wish show. And this dude who's definitely liquored up walking down the street was like, yo man you got a dollar and i said straight up to him i said you didn't even ask me how my day was yep. you, you know what i'm saying like you didn't even ask me what my name was and that's it man is that entitlement of like artists and shit just because you make something don't mean people need it so like you have to present it in a way where like hey you know black you asked me to try to do this for a while and you, you weren't also you know i've had people be like oh man you fucking with me like you know you want you get it and yeah we i get it, it. Yeah, motherfuckers is busy happen. as hell <laughs> like we made it happen and, and things happen at the time they're supposed to so right um this JR, is perfect I'll, timing man yeah i'll keep your shit jr just send it to me and uh you know i appreciate you let's see uh what else we got here but 
He said, I don't want to go 95 being canceled. Man, that was sad. Like, it was the greatest radio station that I've been a part of. And that's, t- and I've been a part of some really great op- opportunities. And, um, sorry, guys, we're serving up over here. Um, oh, no, you good. You good. Uh, man, it's sad. I loved, I loved everything about the station. Listen, we didn't do everything right, but we also did a lot that y'all may not have recognized as far as what was going around, uh, going around the country. Right. Um, we supported local artists. We tried to throw our own shows. Um, you know, some Pete is a legend. Uh, and Sophia was a part of it. Shout out to Augie. And yeah. every, Jimmy two times had those ill, like, DJ nights before. So it was a cool little... It was a some cool... I put some hot mom. <laughs> Sorry. So my mom's excited. Um, so <laughs> come eat. She said to come eat. So I, I really miss Go. And I, hopefully I, I can come back somehow. I might start my own little podcast here soon. I was doing Twitch for a while, which honestly, yeah. dude, I was making money on Twitch. Mo- mo- motherfuckers are making money on Twitch. I know people making six figures on Twitch. Twitch DJing. is fire, bro. DJing. So yeah. y'all get that together. Uh, another, what I want to add on to that is real quick, uh, you know, like you said, Agi, uh, every, first of all, shout out to everybody that was a part of Go95, but Agi personally, uh, one of those people that I really, really fuck with because he put me on a stage and gave me an opportunity to win Shut Up and Rap, you know what I'm saying? And that was something that I felt like was really huge for the city and local artists as well. So shout out to Go95. It's sad that they, that they gone, but, you know, regardless, y'all did leave a mark out here and y'all did what it is y'all was setting out to do. Y'all could have did a lot more, but what you did do is very, very highly appreciated, man. I'm going to say this. All y'all could have done a lot more. You oh, know yeah. What I'm saying? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So, um, you know, next next chapter, man. We got to keep it moving. But here's the thing. Uh, like I said, man, I always have a thread to Minneapolis. So I'm helping out some organizations. I'm doing some charity work right now with the Salvation Army, raising money for to help homelessness and people who can't pay their rent and mortgage because of the pandemic. I'm repelling off 14 stories off the mall of America. Um, so black man, if you want, I think you should do that. I think you could raise some money to do that as well. So we're gonna have to talk about oh, yeah. that, but if wants to help out, that'd be real cool. Uh, and, um, I'm definitely you know, down for that, man. Anytime, anytime you're doing some shit, that's another thing, man. You did the, you did the, uh, the, the sweatshirt drive. What was it called again? Um, 10,000 hoodies for 10,000 10, hoodies, bro. Yep. Yep. And, and so that, you know, we got about 7,000 of them, yeah, which was amazing yeah. from people all over the world, like right. record labels were sending shit. Um, I had uh, Charlie Batch, the old Steeler, sent some shit in and uh, Pink Sweats gave me a joint and yeah. Taylor Gang, of course, li- hooked it up. For sure. And so Burner came through when he came to St. Paul, gave me a cookies, John. Uh, and so, you know, it's just a uh, that was a reminder that, yo, I know in hip hop, it's all about being fly and having all this shit. But. Don't go broke doing it. Yeah, and exactly. I said, on and recycle and, and find ways to be fly without having to go broke. And uh, a good way to like, I'm sure some of y'all are sitting on old hoodies and shit from artists. I know Black GMS, you got all those Macklemore hoodies that you've been holding on to. Ah. Um, you know, so I think that we got to get rid of some of that shit and give it to people who really need it out in your in your community, guys. So yeah. I'm going to try to bring it back this year somehow. I know I'm not on the radio. I'm going to try to reach out to some companies to see if I can just have a drop-off point. And I'm, I am I want to hit that 10,000 mark. I think we're about like at 7,000 something. Yeah. Even if I have to t- nickel and dime it for the next three years, five years, I'm going to hit that 10,000 and we're going to bless people out here in the Twin Cities, you know? And that's what it, that's what it's about, man. Once again, speaking to your character and who you are, man. Just been a solid motherfucker, man. And that's real shit. And we appreciate you for doing that because you did it here. You know what I'm saying? And you and, and you're actually trying to do shit to give back to people and not just be a selfish ass person out here like a lot of the people who I've ran into lately have been. And I'm not gonna say no names, but that's not what it's about. It's about positivity. Yes, exactly, and, man. And giving off good vibes, man. You are what you focus on, right? Exactly. And so I see a lot of people focusing on wanting to, um, there's just people focusing on the wrong things. And so just keep that in mind as, as you guys navigate through what whatever y'all are doing. Shout out to uh, the Cor- Corinne who said, Pass the Lumpia. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. Hey, any um, more questions for DJ Bonix, man? If we, we got, we, this is the last round, last round. Anybody got one last question for DJ Bonix? What's Speak the best now, part? forever hold your weed. What'd you say? 
He says, what's the best bud I ever smoked? You know, I'm going to shout out to KK right now. Of course. Um, you know, I mean, yo, there's so many, man. Like, there, there's so many strands. And Hey, I low, I low key would have been mad if you didn't say KK. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, yeah, man. Yo, make sure you follow at DJ Bonix, Twitter, for Facebook, Instagram. I'm going to get back on that Twitch. I'm going to be out in Vegas soon, hopefully. And black man, keep being a creator. Uh, and yo, see this love that that you're doing and the consistency that you're doing. And look at the the people in here that are that got your back, man. It's like just build off these cats. Oh yeah, that's and, GMS family for sure. Yeah, yeah. So uh, appreciate y'all. Wildest Wiz concert. Yo, you guys remember when Wiz got arrested the day he was supposed to be at Soundset? <laughs> that was a pretty wild story. And they fly, flew him private, and he just came on, dropped 28 grams, and then performed at Soundset. That was pretty amazing. That that was that actually was, and it happened here in Minnesota. That's why we some legendary motherfuckers. Yo, man. Matt Wiz and Mac Miller at the State Fair, dog. Man, oh yeah. Wiz cried that night, man. I don't know if you were there, but Wiz cried on. I stage. was there. Matter of fact, it's funny you mentioned that, bro, because I have a picture somewhere on my social of me taking a picture of Wiz leaving uh the 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 stage when he first got there to promote it on the on the radio show mm -hmm. uh when he was leaving he threw up the peace sign it was him it was it was all y'all motherfuckers was leaving and going in the van and then people was chasing the van down the street to get to the venue and shit it was it was a good day man it was a good day and they and they wasn't tripping off people smoking that day because like i said it's something about wiz that brings that aura around like when wiz is around it's like motherfuckers say you know what i don't care let them smoke <laughs> yeah, like someone actually, Chevy had this conversation. Uh, we had this conversation the other day where Wiz took the brunt of that weed shit. Look yes. how, how how open weed is now, but we were the ones going in the venue, smoking it out, and smoking the hotel room out, and and now it's like weeds are you know Wiz was you know Wiz got arrested for riding a hoverboard in the airport, you know like we Wiz is getting in trouble for all the shit that's cool now. Exactly. And, uh, so. You know, shout out to Wiz, man. I mean, yo, we've smoked weed in countries we shouldn't have. Yep. Um, we've been in countries where we were thought we were miles away from it, and they would show up to us. Um, we've been in countries where it's very illegal, and um, somehow it happened. Um, we've smoked weed on planes. So, yep. so uh, hey, and shout, shout out, shout out. I have to shout out because it wouldn't be me if I didn't shout out Spitter as well. Because oh, yeah. I, I that's 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 my number one. It's always been my number one my favorite of all time, and the fact that he plays a big role, and the fact that Wiz smokes papers today, yeah, totally, and the fact that. that they both uh, contributed to the culture and actually changed, and it like they they birthed an entire generation of potheads, totally, and. It's so great. And you I'm know, one the, of them. The, the audience is definitely like diverse too, which is great. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Uh, pot, pot is for everyone, man. You know, and right. that's what I'm saying is that rap isn't necessarily for everyone, but pot is. So how could you hate on that? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, it wouldn't be no GMS if there was no TGOD or Jet Life. So I'm letting you know right now. Gang, gang, man, gang. DJ Bonix. Black, you got to tell me what size you wear. I'm going to send you. I'm going to find. So here's what's about to go down. I wear a size hefty. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm about to get rid of my record collection and all my merch and all my Taylor gang. Like, I'm about to just purge all this shit. So okay. make sure y'all follow me. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it. I want to, like, have actually do it in person and have a party. But I might do a component where I'm getting rid of shit. If anyone's, like, an actual big collector of whatever records you love with shit or whatever and you really are interested in something, I might make an Instagram account and like post all the shit that I'm going to try to get rid of. So if anyone's interested in anything, if you big Wiz fan, I got a lot of weird different shit. Um, shout I don't know, to, you probably accumulated a lot over the years. Shout out to my man, Himanshu is in the chat right now. And what's cool hey. about Himanshu is he's in India right now. Hey, and shout I'm, out to India. Yeah, I'll tell you a quick story is that he, this guy, I don't know, he's just, you know, a fan of the gang. And uh, he showed me so much love. And he started a DJ Bonix fan page on Instagram. Oh, that's and I never, met, I never met this cat before ever. So a couple of years ago, we were gonna we we're in India, and I had him meet me, 
and I brought him backstage and he met Wiz and took a picture and watched the show from the stage. That's real shit. And uh, so Himanchu has been a huge supporter. Sh- shout out to King Otto, who's a legend in, in Minnesota, and uh, he he's moving to Phoenix, Arizona. So we're okay. miss him in the Twin Cities. So shout out. Hey, King, King Otto been popping in, uh, popping in the lives uh, lately too, man. Shout out to him. Yeah, shout out to King Otto. And one one time for India in the chat, y'all. Look at that. India to the Twin Cities. Himanchu, man. Thank you very much, man. Uh, see, look. Th- this man done brought people from overseas to come fuck with GMS, man. Thank you so much, DJ Bonix, for coming through and, and, and chopping it up with me, man. You know, like you said, this been in the works for a minute, but timing is everything. And I and this is the perfect time to do it, man. Thank you so much for popping up on me and, and showing love. Let's do it again, let's do it again man. Let's, uh, let's do it again whenever... You have a, you have a yeah, chance to, and, and deep. wherever I end up next, you know what I mean? Most definitely, man. Well, once whenever again, you man, want, thank you. you do it again once a month, whatever you want, man. We'll do hey, it. I'm down with whatever. You know, I'm gonna hit you, bro. You know, I'm gonna definitely hit you now. Enjoy, enjoy that good ass food. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy your folks, man. Appreciate you so much for stopping through. GMS, I want y'all to say thank you, DJ Bonix, hey. in the chat right now. Thank you to GMS, man, uh, and for Black. He don't have to do this, and he wants to make sure y'all are uh, connected. And, and this is this is what I'm talking about. This is what community is. So shout out Brim Dog, Black Man Art, uh, America, Kid at Heart. I appreciate you, Jared Miller, Haman Shu, King Otto, Lady Aries, OG, Ben Slim, Arius, YNG, everyone in the chat. I appreciate you, Tejadora, NYC. Um, nothing but love, y'all. I appreciate it. Love each, sure, other, right? love each other. I love each other. Love each other. One love. Appreciate you, Bonix. Right, Peace. Yo, GMS family. GMS family. Thank y'all so much, man. That was that was a dope ass interview. That was a dope ass interview, man. Shout out to DJ Bonix. Bruh. Y'all gotta understand something. These are things that I have been manifesting, things that I have been talking about doing and putting the work forth doing. And I'm glad that me and him actually had the conversation talking about putting the work for it because you not out there putting the work for it. You're not going to see no results from it. And the fact that we have built, you know, a rapport over these past few years, man, I, I really appreciate Bonix for pulling up because he really didn't have to, man. Uh, you know, Bonix is a very busy motherfucker, so he didn't have to pull up and he didn't have to come do this interview, but he did. Uh, and he fucked with GMS. And of course, you know, we fuck with him and we fuck with Taylor Gang and the whole conglomerate, man. Once again, DJ Bonix, thank you for pulling up on us, man. GMS family, y'all know what time it is. Put the GMS in the chat. I'm finna shout out everybody right now. This was fucking amazing. I am definitely on a high in two different ways. Y'all, GMS family, let's get it. GMS, GMS, put the GMS in the chat. Let's get it. It's okay if you missed it. You can just rewind this motherfucker. Yeah. Y'all ready? I'm happy as fuck right now. I don't know if y'all can tell. That was dope as fuck. GMS in the comments. Put a GMS in the comments right now. Shout out to J.R. Miller, Fooster Files, Arius Allen, Brim Dog, Black Man America, Lady Aries, Coyote Cage, with your drunk ass, Tyler Beneficiary, Binky Bianca in the building, Zen Master, AP, Player for Life, Kid at Heart in the building. Y'all showed up. Appreciate y'all. GMS family, the habitual pull-uppers. Jim, Jimmy Child in the in the motherfucking chat. Shout out to Jimmy Child. Aboriginal T. Y'all be having some wild and great and crazy names all at once. Simo in the building. King Lukey in the building. Corin Stevens, Tejadora, NYC. Ben Slim. What we got? What we got? GMS family. 
Yeesh. One punchline. What's happening? Oh, let me say, let me make sure I say this name right. Himan Shu. There we go. Himan Shu. Shout out to Himan Shu, man. All the way from motherfucking India. India. YNG legend. OG Mont. King Otto. Hey, Wonder Man in the building, I see you. Shout out to y'all and the GMS is in the chat, man. Look, once again, special shout out. Six Mile, I see you. All the way from Detroit. Look, man, what an interview. What an interview. It was very special. We gonna keep going too. We gonna keep elevating as well, man. More interviews, more shows. You know, today's Tuesday. I, I I do shows Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so make sure you pull up tomorrow as well and on Friday because we're going to have more shit for y'all. I got a special show tomorrow, depending on what happens tonight for all my other for all my other homies in here that know what I'm talking about. Shout out to Angela J. Appreciate y'all, man. Texas in the building. Hey, man, once again, follow me on my socials. I follow everybody back. Hit that cash app if you're feeling generous. GMS family, I thank y'all for pulling up on me, man. It was really dope. Shout out DJ Bonix, TGOD in the building. Smoke some. Y'all have a blessed day.